Okay, great. Should be recording. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm the ship Seattle U president. Um, I'm a third year mechanical engineering major. Um, and welcome to our session. We have Cesar Martinez here. He's the uh, program manager uh, at Microsoft. And um, um, he's, yeah, he also has a podcast as well, uh, No Fluff Mindset. It's amazing. I, I watched a couple uh, episodes and it's, it's amazing. Uh, definitely look out for it. It's, uh, it's a really great page. He has, he's got Instagram, LinkedIn, everything. So it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, we also have uh, Enrique here with uh, Ship uh, UDOB. If you want to introduce yourself, if you want. Sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> hello, everyone. My name is Enrique. I'm a co president for the Ship UDOB chapter. Um, I'm also I'm a senior studying civil engineering, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, we had a Caesar host a meeting back in October on uh, the importance of mindset and focus, and it was it was a really great um, event. So I'm really happy to be here and uh, listen to Caesar again. So yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it over to you, Caesar. Introduce yourself and whatnot. <laughs> All right, what's up, everyone? So yes, I am Caesar. Um, in my slides, you know, let, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen if I can. Um, we're gonna have to work. To, hopefully, this works because normally I share a whole screen. I'm just sharing the window. Can you guys see that? All good. All right. Really quickly, what I want you guys to do is unmute. And I'm asking you how you're doing and you're not allowed to say good or great or anything like that. Be specific. How are you guys doing? Energized. Nice. Excited for the session. All right, all right. Tentative. Tentative, ooh, okay. Excited. <laughs> Excited, okay. What else, what else? We got a few I'll, more. How are you guys feeling? I'll say I'm a little stressed with school, but I'm excited as well. Stress with school. Hey, that's normal, yeah. man. Stress is what makes us do things. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I feel uh, I feel ready to to hear your presentation. Ready. All right. Good. I like it. Good. Good. So a lot of positivity. Some some realism too. Some stress with the. Did you guys start the semester or not yet? Yeah. Started it? Was, was it this past week, two weeks? How, how's it going so far? Yeah, we're in the middle of third week, at least for Seattle U. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. gotcha, gotcha. I know uh, uh, Illinois is starting, I think, this coming Monday. So. Oh, different. okay. All right. Cool. They're, they're very different schedules. But nonetheless, awesome. Yeah. I'm glad, and I'm glad you all are here today. Um, like Elia said, I am Cesar Martinez. <laughs> I am a program manager at Microsoft now. Up until last June, I was actually a software engineer working on the Azure portal. Uh, and I did that for three and a half years before that. And before that, I worked in Atlanta. And before that, I'm originally from Illinois. I'll give you guys a little bit of background. Um, I've been super involved in SHIP ever since I started my college career, even a couple of days before. They had this program that I was a part of and blah, blah, blah. SHIP was literally my life outside of school when I was in college. And it's still a huge part of my life. I'm still involved through the professional chapter here in the Puget Sound, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'll tell you guys a little more about that. But that's why I'm so excited to be talking to you guys, because I feel like just yesterday I was in your shoes. It's ridiculous to think about the fact that it's been like five, six years now. Like it's, it's crazy to me because it literally feels like just yesterday. But nonetheless, I'm just a human. I'm just a person. And I've just figured some things out and I'm here to give you guys some tips uh, so that you guys can do the same. Does that sound fair? All right, let's do it. So a mini introduction. Uh, like I said, we're going to get straight to the point here because I know you guys have things to do and I'm very grateful that you're giving me an hour of your time, maybe a little more if you want some more time. Um, but you know, let's get straight to it. My whole thing is no fluff, as you, as you guys know. So let's cut the fluffs, get straight to it. I'll give you guys a mini introduction of who I am, what I do, why I'm here. Uh, I'll let you guys know about what you should maybe change and what you should keep doing to stay efficient as you're entering your, your school weeks or any time that you enter a time where it's a little more stressful or a little more on your plate. No big deal. You just kind of change up how you approach it and you'll be fine. Um, how to get organized for your weeks and your days ahead. How to set up your environment to help you actually crush it because 
quick tip, willpower alone does not last. It's a finite resource. That's a mistake that we make all the time. So you actually need to set yourself up for success. Then how to reset and recenter anytime because things get crazy, things hit the fan all the time. And so that's fine. We can expect that and just learn how to reset when that happens. And then of course, how to channel the actual best version of you. Cause there's a version of you that absolutely crushes it this semester. And there's a version of you that doesn't, right? So all we need to do is channel that version of you and make sure that you're that this semester and year and onward and onward. And then open q and I wanna answer all of your guys' questions that you have. So a little bit about me, like I said, uh, I went to Illinois, that's me on the Jumbotron. I love going to, to all the sports games and everything. Um, since my freshman year, I was very involved in SHIP. I was even an MC for our freshman year date auction. That's, that was like the first time I did any kind of public speaking for reference. Uh, and that actually turned into a lot of other MC engagements, which was really cool. Um, I was also very involved in the high school outreach and community service committees through our SHIP chapter. I did a, just tons of community service uh, through all of that. Lots of different talks on how to get internships and resumes. As you guys know, we have another one coming up. Lots of leadership through SHIP. Uh, which I'm very grateful for. Um, on top of that, I did also study computer science. Uh, I actually did five years. I stretched it out so I could also minor in business and focus on the psychology and perception side of user interface design. So even though I studied computer science, you know, I really kind of liked all the other stuff around it. And so you guys will kind of see a theme with that with the rest of the way that my career's played out so far. And so now, you know, after graduating, I had my first job. Well, I had many internships. I had three throughout my college career. And then I had my first job in Atlanta as a support engineer. And oh, after a year and a half of that, my buddy from SHIP told me about opening on his team here at Microsoft. And I studied really hard and I got it. And that's when I moved here at the beginning of 2017. And I've been here ever since. Like I said, I was a software engineer and now I'm a program manager. Um, and this is what I do now. So obviously I have friends, we watch Bachelor every Monday, like we hang out all the time. Like there, people have this, this idea that there's like this real world and there's this like adult world and that it's different. There's no such thing. Like it's just, it's just like, instead of doing school, you do work and you actually get paid instead of having to pay for it. And you still hang out with your friends and like life is still pretty normal. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm still very involved in SHIP, like I said, through the professional chapter. That's me volunteering with SHIP at University of Washington. I'd love to meet all of you guys in person once the environment allows. That'd be awesome. Um, bottom left is my buddy's bachelor party uh, in Vegas. I, I love all kinds of fun, extreme things. Like uh, I've been skydiving a few times, whitewater rafting, jet ski, all that, all that kind of stuff is, is a good time. And then I also coach basketball. Our season's on hold right now, but uh, they will be 13 year old girls this year. Uh, in the past couple of years, there were 16 and 17 year olds. We actually won their first championship of their lives. And it was my first year coaching. So that's one of my proud accomplishments, but nonetheless. And this is aside from working at Microsoft, hanging out with friends, coaching basketball, mentoring students. I have also, with the way that 2020 went, opened my doors to professional success coaching and life coaching and mindset coaching through what's called the No Fluff Mindset. That's my brand. These are my pages on Facebook and Instagram. I'm expanding to other ones, like Elias mentioned, to podcasting very soon and YouTube, even on TikTok now, all that, all that good stuff. Reason being, when 2020 hit, I realized that I was pretty okay, even though I was in a studio apartment. And I decided to completely isolate as much as I could. And I had something go bad in the family at the same time. And you know, I stayed inside and I worked inside and I gymmed inside and I was fine. And I realized that so many people weren't and not to say that that wasn't valid, it totally was. But then I dug into why that was. And I realized it was because I've been working on myself for so long, it's been almost 10 years. You know, At the beginning of my college career, is when I needed some motivation. So I started looking into speakers like Eric Thomas and other motivational speakers to keep me on track, right? So that I can finish my work. I pulled tons of all-nighters. I didn't mention that. In my computer science career, I liked it, but there's some coders out there. And then there's people who are interested in it and like it and they push themselves. I was that, I was that guy. So I pulled a lot of all-nighters in my days in college. Um, I'll rec I, what I'm going to teach you today is how to not have to do that, right? Because there's no reason you should have to pull all nighters, I promise you. But nonetheless, I needed motivation to get through my days of college too, right? And I, as being a leader, I wanted to understand how people thought about different things and how to uh, get them motivated to do their best work, right? And nonetheless, 
when 2020 hit, I realized I was kind of prepared mentally, emotionally, physically in my mindset and others needed to learn the kinds of messages that I've been spreading. And that's when all of this kind of started. So I'm so excited to be speaking to you guys through that and through ship and through all the above. Uh, you know, this is what I call alignment. Things start to fall into place when you get clarity on exactly who you are, what you should be doing. And here we are. So let's jump into how to get the most out of yourselves in your days. Actually, one quick thing. I saw, I think a hand go up. I don't know if it was clapping. Was it a hand or was it clapping? All right, if it wasn't a hand, we're good, cool. Feel free guys to raise your hand at any time. Like you can even just go like this and like, it's totally informal. It's a two-way conversation. Like, yeah, I'm a person, we're not just screens. Like we, we can talk, right? So let's get into it. You are always, and there's a typo there. Oh, well, that's how life goes. You are all always setting up for either success or for failure. I want you guys to keep this in mind because a lot of times we think that there's this in-between state where we're not really setting ourselves up for success, but oh, well, you know, I'm not really setting up for failure either. Well, if you're really trying to push yourselves and do something great, then not setting up for success is a failure, right? And so what we want to do is make sure that we are constantly setting up for success, whatever that means for us, whatever is most important at that time. So success or failure, always. First, let's focus on creating success and then minimizing failure, right? So how do you create success? A lot of these things you guys have heard over and over and over, but there's a reason that I'm okay with repeating it to you because the, the reason it's repeated so often is because these are the things that work for 90 something percent of people. And they work because we're all humans. And we know as humans, there's a certain set of rules that if you abide by them, you're gonna get certain results. And if you don't, you're gonna get different results, right? So one of them, for example, is eating healthy. Food is literally fuel, right? For your body, but also for your mind. So if you eat garbage, guess what you're gonna get out of your body and guess what you're gonna get out of your mind and guess how you're gonna perform either while you're studying or being a part of a team or trying to pay attention in class. If you're running on garbage, how's that gonna go? Good or bad? Give me some thumbs, good or bad? Yeah, obviously it's gonna go bad, right? At the same time though, if you eat healthy food that's energizing, that's nutritious, that's good for you, it's gonna go the opposite way. You're gonna do great, right? You're gonna be able to focus, you're gonna have energy, you're gonna be able to perform, you'll be able to knock out what you gotta knock out. Makes sense, right? Uh, similar to that is exercising daily. Something that I learned way too late was that exercise isn't just for fitness people, right? Exercise isn't just for athletes. Exercise is something that you do to take care of yourself, not only your body, but again, your mind too, right? When you exercise, it releases endorphins and it flushes out different parts of your body and the way that the blood flows. And it literally wakes up your brain, like physically, it's not just kind of an idea, it's physically the way that your body works. So make sure that you're exercising, if not daily, at least every other day. Get your heart rate up, sweat in some way, shape, or form. You know, find your favorite form. Maybe you just love going for walks. That's fine, but make sure that you're moving, right? Because motion is similar to action. Uh, our bodies as humans, when we move, that is when we feel like we are producing. And when we don't move, we feel like we're not. Inaction causes more inaction, and action causes more action, right? So if you're not moving, do you think you're going to want to be productive? If your body's inactive, do you think your brain's going to want to be active? Probably not, right? But at the same time, literally, if you do some jumping jacks and you literally like do some squats, move around, get moving, then your brain's like, oh, we're doing things now, right? It wakes up. It's like, hey, we're in action mode. We're being active now. And that's how you can literally wake up your brain. Your, your body and your mind are very closely correlated. So keep that in mind. Sleeping for seven or eight hours, right? You need to not only recharge your body and mind, but while you sleep, that's actually the time that your brain takes all of your thoughts and all of your knowledge and everything you've studied and everything you've listened to and all the homework you did and actually organizes it in your brain, right? How many of you have, have watched or love watching SpongeBob? Thank God. Okay, thank God. Good. I love SpongeBob. So do you guys remember the episode where uh, he's, he's learning about fine dining and they have this metaphor where inside of his brain, there's all these little SpongeBob's running around with filing cabinets and trying to find thoughts and remember things. That is literally what your brain does at night. When you're sleeping, your brain is taking all of these files, all of these thoughts, everything from the whole day and your past and all of your experiences, 
and it's filing things away, right? So when we dream, that's actually just us kind of becoming conscious and seeing glimpses of that, everything flying around. So that's why sometimes you see kind of a mix of like some, like, you know, maybe you're in one place, but you see different people and then it's like kind of random. It's just because it's all these files flying around. So I tell you this because I pulled all nighters and gone straight into finals and completely blanked. As prepared as I was two hours before that, I didn't sleep and I went straight to the final and nothing was being recalled. Why? Because it was never filed away, right? So being able to recall it was almost impossible. So I promise you, value your sleep. It's not only for this filing system, but it's also so that obviously you have energy to focus and all the above. You guys know that, right? But value it, prioritize it. Proactive recharging. And by proactive, I mean, you know, there's a difference between laying on the couch and scrolling through Instagram or, you know, taking a break from studying, but actually sitting in the same place and like opening up Facebook or YouTube or something as opposed to, you know, getting up, getting in motion, you know, getting a drink, getting some fresh air, you know, again, moving and detaching from your work in a healthy way that's also easy to break out of. This is one of the tough ones that people don't realize is if you go from working into a different comfortable state, for example, sitting here at the table and I want to take a break and I lay on the couch, am I going to want to get up from the couch? Like that's one of the hardest things to do, right? If you're comfortable, like why would you want to get up? But on the flip side, think about it. If during your break, you actually just kind of walk around the table, like you can respond to people through your five minutes and you're, you're standing and you're moving. It's a little bit easier to sit back down than to get up from a couch, right? You see that difference? And so that's what I mean by proactive recharging. Make sure it's something that gives you some energy back, gives you some focus back. You know, you get to detach but also something that you can hop out of very easily. So you guys know what's dangerous, right? If it's Netflix or YouTube or Instagram, whatever it is for you, you guys know what's dangerous. If it's a comfortable couch, if it's you know, your bed, whatever it is, stay away from those if you know you're in the middle of something, right? And instead do something that gives you a little bit of energy so that you can sit back down and keep going. And then of course, uh, supporting system, your support system is what you should make sure that you have in check. Uh, your support system is essentially who are the people that you're spending the most time with and do they support what you're doing? Do they value the way that you're spending your time? Do their values match yours? And is hanging out with them, for example, actually something that takes away from your goals or it helps your goals, right? Do your friends give you energy and give you ideas and motivate you to be your best self or do they actually drain you, right? Are you actually wasting time with them? And I'm not saying you have to cut people completely off, but you might want to reprioritize who you're spending the most time with. Because in general, you start to become the average of the people you spend the most time with, right? Naturally, you start to pick up, you know, the way that even the way they speak sometimes, I, I think we've, we've noticed, but also some of their habits and the way that they spend their time, right? If your buddies are playing video games all day and you want to hang out with them, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to play video games all day, right? But if you have other friends who, I mean, maybe you guys go out to eat or something and you guys always kind of talk about what you're doing and all these extracurriculars and you want to do more with SHIP or you want to make sure you, you nail this exam, then you're going to be that, right? And one of those is a little healthier than the other. So become conscious of that and pay attention to who you're spending your time with. All of those ways are ways to proactively create success, right? Setting yourself up to succeed. Is there any questions on that? We'll keep going. So on the flip side of that is we also want to minimize the chance of failure. So we touched on some of these already. Any social media that is not essential, and by essential, I mean like I know I use Messenger. Sometimes uh, I only talk to people through Snapchat or something. So, you know, sometimes it's fine to respond to people, but if it's something that's going to suck the time out of you and you know that, and you know it's something that you don't need, it's just fun. Like TikTok is my number one example of that then can you uninstall it, right? And if you really can't, can you at least log out when you're done? So that when you do wanna check it, it gives you that extra barrier of like, hey, am I sure that this is how I wanna spend my time right now? Or am, am I going to mindlessly open up my phone? Because we, get, we also have to acknowledge that we're addicted to these, right? Naturally, because of the environment that we were raised in, we are addicted to our phones and to the apps on them. How many of you have at some point just picked up your phone and 
a few minutes later, you don't even remember why you picked it up in the first place. And you're just in the middle of something like, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok happens all the time. It happens to me all the time. Like don't, it's, it's okay. It happens. But the thing is you have to be aware of it and you have to set yourself up in a way where you don't anymore. So I actually have a second phone that doesn't have any of that for, for my normal days. Um, nonetheless, acknowledge it and see if you can log out in the middle of something, right? No big deal. Uh, nothing with infinite scroll, you know that. No binge watching. Like I said, log out of your stuff, man. It's not that hard. It only takes 30 seconds, but it will usually stop you because it makes you think about it. Hey, do I really want to do this, right? And no reactive days is another big one. Uh, how many of you currently have a morning routine? Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't either. So, so yeah, I didn't either. It wasn't until, like I said, I really started digging into this stuff and digging into what do the sec most successful people do and what do people do to get the most out of their days. And most of them have a proactive morning routine. And what that means is instead of waking up and just doing the first thing that the day demands of you, aka being in a reactive state, reacting to what the day says, maybe you can wake up 20 minutes earlier. Maybe you can wake up an hour earlier. I try to wake up two hours earlier and decide what I want my day to look like, right? So for me, that's usually some form of either meditation or journaling, and then uh, some form of exercise. I make sure I take a cold shower and I plan my day and I say, this is what I'm gonna do. And being in that proactive state, you know, it, it makes it so that you do what you want to get out of the day instead of just reacting the entire time. Because then before you know it, the day is gone and you didn't do the things that you wanted to do. You did the things that the day said. You see that difference? So instead of being reactive and waking up reactive from the very beginning of the day, be proactive, right? Give yourself 20, 30 minutes to say, hey, like, this is what I need to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And you take control of it. See if you can go without your phone for the first 30 minutes of the day, right? How many of us <laughs> wake up and touch our phone first thing? The very first thing we do. Yeah, right? How many of us are saying, oh, well, it's because I have an alarm on my phone. That's why. Bro, 10 bucks buys you an alarm. You know that, right? We all know that. So if that's the problem, buy an alarm, 10 bucks. I'll buy it for you. Let me know. All right. But try to be proactive with your day. I promise you the way that you start your day is the way that your day is going to go. So make sure you start it in a proactive state, not a reactive state. And finally, remember that it's okay to go cave mode sometimes, right? In my college career, there was many uh, weekends where I would say, hey guys, like I'm going cave mode. Like I'll see y'all on Monday because I knew I had a lot to do and I had to stay focused, right? And I knew that there were certain friends that, you know, they were going to go to parties. There were different events going on that I wasn't going to go to. And so I said, hey, guys, like, I'll, I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you afterwards. Right. I, I have some things to do. I have some other priorities right now and I need to do that. And I call it cave mode because something to remember is when you come back out, all your friends are still going to be there. All your family's still going to be there. If they're the ones that support you, like they know that you got something more important that you need to focus on. And actually, they'll be rooting for you right outside the cave. Right. And so when you're done and you come out, if, if anything, they'll be cheering for you. Like, hey, nice, man. Good stuff. Welcome back. Right. Let's watch Bachelor. That's what my friends do. That's what they do now anyway. So um, don't be afraid of that. Right. If you have priorities, prioritize your priorities. So how's that feel? Any questions on that? Good stuff. So one technique that you can try while you're actually in the act of doing what you need to do, right? In your case, it's a lot of doing homework or studying or watching lectures, whatever it may be. The Pomodoro technique. Uh, how many of you have actually heard of this before? Good. How many of you do this regularly? Uh, all right. Nice. So Bruno, uh, can you give a, a quick overview of what it is and how it works for you? Yeah, so the I have the I use an app for it, but uh, yeah, it's a twenty five minutes of work, and it can pretty much just wait for the alarm. Stop focused work, no phone, and then when the alarm goes off, you take a break, um, and then it'll give you another alarm when your break is over, and you go back into work, and it kind of just breaks up the monotony of focused work. Beautiful man, exactly right. So the thing is, a lot of times when we have something to do, it's usually a bigger task than we can chew. And so what happens is we try to focus on all of it when it's impossible to get all of it done in a single train of thought, right? And that's where a lot of times we'll end up uh, breaking off and procrastinating in ways that we don't want to, as opposed to the Pomodoro technique. 
which all it is is uh, like Bruno said, you know, we break it up into chunks that you can always focus on something for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, right? So I always start with the first five minutes actually, instead of the, the first chunk, which is get up, move, squat, uh, hydrate, take a break, you know, respond to people, do what you gotta do. Make sure that you're moving, make sure your blood's pumping, make sure you're awake and then recenter yourself. We're gonna go through a breathing technique in, in a little bit on how to recenter yourself, come back to the present moment, right? Reflect on the past 25 minutes, if it's not the beginning, like how those went, and then plan out your next 25 minutes only, your next 20 to 25. Specifically, what are you gonna get done in that amount of time, right? If you have a whole assignment, are you gonna do the whole assignment in 20, 25 minutes? Or is there a chunk of it that you know you can do in 20 to 25 minutes if you really focus, right? That's the purpose of the Pomodoro Technique. You take these chunks, and when that chunk is something you can finish in those 20 to 25, it's a lot easier to focus on that than the whole thing, right? And so then, of course, you go through, you do your work for the 25 minutes. If you have an app or an alarm, that's great. That's a great way to help you not even have to worry about what time it is. If you have the alarm set, you don't even have to think about it. And then once it goes off, you repeat, right? You take your five minute break, you get up, you move, you hydrate, you respond to people. And then you keep doing that until the work is done. Every couple of hours, you can take a longer break. You know, every three or four sessions, take a longer break, do what you got to do. But what this does is a couple of things. One is you only have to focus on that small chunk, which makes it a lot more digestible. Two, when it comes to responding to people, which I get it, we want to respond right away all the time. But if I tell you to focus for a handful of hours, it's a lot harder for us because we're addicted to these to actually break away and not respond to people. There's so much going on in the social media world, but also just people messaging us and people are going to this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot di more digestible to say, hey, put that away for 20 minutes, right? You can respond to them in 20, 25 minutes. Then you don't have to worry about it. It's not that long. Everyone can wait that long. It's no big deal. You're not going to miss out on anything if you wait 20, 25 minutes, right? And then in your five minutes, like I said, walk around the table, you know, respond really quickly, reflect on the past 25 minutes. How did it go? Did you actually do what you said you were going to do? The one thing that you said you're going to do in 20, 25 minutes, did you actually do it? If not, think about why, right? And then plan your next 20 to 25, specifically that one chunk, right? And what I have here is an image of Will Smith with one of the, the best analogies, I think, for this is you don't set out to build an entire wall. You don't say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall there's ever been. You don't start there, right? You say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as it can be laid, this one brick. And you do that every single day, one brick, one brick, one brick. And then soon you'll have a wall, right? And that wall will be comprised of perfectly laid bricks, every single one. But it doesn't come from focusing on the whole wall. It, it comes from focusing on each individual brick. You see that difference? And if I tell you to lay a brick, anyone can do that. That's, that's not too much work, right? It doesn't seem overwhelming, but we naturally look at the whole wall. So that's what the Pomodoro technique helps you do is break it into these bricks, 20, 25 minute bricks. Take that short break in between so that you can still do what you gotta do. Make sure you're moving, find your next chunk and go chunk by chunk by chunk. Does that make sense? It sounds like Bruno's an expert on this. So if you have questions, ask Bruno. This is a, a very well-known technique. People all over Microsoft do it. People all in my college days did it. I do it now uh, when I really need to get stuff done. So highly recommend. And like I said, make it work for you. If 20 or 25 seems too long, you know, break it into 15, fine, but keep those short, right? Or maybe 30 or 35 is better for you because you enter flow, fine, do that. But like I said, make it those chunks that you know you can digest and you know you can always do. So that's how you execute, right? But a very important part right before that is your planning, right? So how do you actually plan for the week or plan for the day ahead so that you're getting the most out of your entire day or your entire week, not just the 25 minute chunks, but on a higher level, how do you plan that? So there's an analogy of the rocks, pebbles in the sand. Who knows this analogy already? Oh, really? Wow. So the analogy goes, uh, say we have a bunch of rocks and pebbles in the sand, as you guys can see on the left side, right? And I tell you, hey, you have to put these all in a jar, right? Make them all fit. If you put the sand first, it fills up, you know, to a certain level. And then you put the pebbles, it, they kind of pile on top. And then you try to put the rocks on top of that, there's no way they're gonna fit, right? 
because you put the sand first. But if you flip it around, think about it. You put the big rocks first, then you put in the pebbles and the pebbles, what happens is they fill in all the gaps between the big rocks, right? And then you put the sand and the sand fills in even the tiniest cracks in between the rocks and the pebbles. And then all of a sudden it all fits, right? So this is obviously an analogy for how do you fit everything into your day? How do you fit everything into your week? Because we all have 24 hours. We all have seven days, right? Time doesn't go differently for us as far as we know. And so this is how we can plan our day, how we can plan our week. So first plan your rocks, right? Your rocks always go first. And what are your rocks? Your rocks are the things that are important that are not flexible, right? So for example, this would be things like your actual classes, you can't move those. You should be going to your lectures and same with study and discussions and all that. Um, if you have tests coming up, those should definitely go into your, into your calendar. Um, any other major events that you know can't move and you know are very important, those are your rocks. Your pebbles then are the things that are important but flexible. So for example, um, you know, exercising would be something that's a pebble. You should definitely exercise every day, but you can move around what time you do it sometimes, right? sometimes an hour earlier or later, um, or things that are not so important, uh, but they're also not flexible. These are things that see if you can move. So maybe you have, you know, um, you have to go to the dentist this week, but you're actually kind of overwhelmed because you have a lot of studying to do for your, for your exam. See if you can move the dentist appointment, right? Dentist is still important. Don't get me wrong, but if you can move it, move it, right? And then finally is the sand, right? That's all the fun stuff, the things that are not important and are flexible. I usually refer to these as like your chores, for example, like doing your laundry and dishes and stuff. Um, anything like that, you know, anytime that you just want to hang out with a random friend, just because, you know, that's kind of your sand, you fill in the gaps with that. Once you have all of your important things done, and say, Oh, I can hang out, you know, this day, this morning, or that night, we can do that, right, then you fill in the cracks with that. If you start with that, though, the big stuff isn't going to fit. And that's when you're not going to have enough time to study. That's when you're not going to be focused during lectures, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So make sure that you go in order of what's most important. Rocks, pebbles, sand. Does that make sense? Awesome. Hey, Caesar. Oh, go ahead. Uh, what was the name of that analogy again? The rocks, pebbles, and the sand? Yeah, they... is it? Yeah, that one. Oh, this is just a concept, man. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's like, they're... okay, I thought you said it had a name or like kind of like the analogy or like there's something like some that's common, okay. Yeah, not this one. Pomodoro technique was the other one. Oh, okay. Named after, I think, the person that founded it or made it popular. This is just a concept, man. Rocks, pebbles, and sand, right? Cool. I think I got those flipped. Cool. Yeah, man. Like, how do you get them to fit in a jar? Well, that's how. Yeah. And so, again, this applies to both your days, right? As you're planning your day, put your rocks first, what's the most important, and then the pebbles in the sand. But also for your weeks. I recommend planning your weeks. I do every single Sunday. I reflect on the past week, and I think about the next week. And saying I put my big rocks, my pebbles in my sand. So for example, this was one of my rocks for this week. Like for sure, like I, I there's no way I'm going to move it. It's super important. Like these, these are the things that fall into my schedule first. And then everything else kind of falls in around. Like for example, like it's, it's my dad's birthday today. So I said, Hey, well, awesome. I have a talk with Chip UW and, and Chip Seattle U. So I can talk right after that. Right. It's important, but it's a little more flexible. So I'm going to face, I'm going to FaceTime my family right after this. Right. You see how that kind of works. And so, um, yeah, rocks, pebbles, sand. I think you guys get it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, real quick. Let's all shake it out real quick. Move your arms up and down. I, I'm not going to stop until we all move. I promise you. <laughs> Humans are not meant to sit in one spot and be inactive. Humans are meant to move right? Again, inaction causes more inaction. Action causes more action. Motion is an action, right? Emotion is literally energy in motion. That's what emotions are. So you can literally change your state by moving. Keep that in mind. So how do you actually set up your environment to crush it? We talked about as you're executing what to do, and we talked about how to plan it out. But then how do you actually set up your external environment in a way that's going to help you, right? Again, maximize success and minimize failure. How do you do that? And the way that you do that is you be intentional with everything that you do. You should do this in general with life, but especially when it comes to something that's important that you need to knock out, be intentional with every single part of what you're doing. So first of all, where will you be? What's a good spot for you? How many of you are uh, currently studying from home 
as opposed to at the school? Most of us, right? Maybe all of us, most of us at least. Yeah, so where you study is very important, right? If you study in the same place that you sleep, like what are the chances that you're going to not get tired from your bed? What are the chances that from bed you're not gonna be thinking about work, right? That's tough. So what you should do is try to have a dedicated spot where you know you can focus. Maybe there's some good daylight there. Maybe you know it's quieter around. Maybe there's less foot traffic if you're in your house, right? Where will you be? Do Pick a place on purpose and be able to explain, this is why I'm studying right here. This is why I'm taking my lecture right here. Make sense? Also, who will be around you, right? Uh, for some of us, maybe we need complete isolation because anyone is a distraction. We need you know, total silence. We can't be seeing people. But some of us are different. Maybe some of us need an accountability partner. Maybe you should have someone next to you. Maybe you know, if, if your mom's working from home too and you can kind of work in the same room, you can set something up like that, right? Maybe if your little brother's running around the house like crazy, you, you have to be as far away from him as possible, right? Who's gonna be around you? What are you gonna accomplish? We just talked about this quite a bit, so we won't dive in, but you know, in the next 25 minutes, in the next hour, in the next day, specifically, what am I going to accomplish? Why is that the most important thing right now, right? A lot of times what happens is as we're trying to do, as we're trying to accomplish, as we're trying to um, you know, reach certain goals, we confuse being busy with being productive, right? You can be busy all day long knocking out to-dos that aren't your most important thing to do. And you can be busy you know, 10, 12 hours in the day and still not get done what you needed to, right? Being productive is about doing the most important things in order. One concept that I actually explained to one of my clients yesterday is we never get everything done on our to-do list, ever. I never get everything done on my to-do list. But what I do is I get the most important things done every single day. That's because at the beginning of the week or the beginning of the day in the morning, I plan, I look at what are the three or five most important things for today and in order. And that's the order that I do what I do, right? If I don't get to four or five, it's okay because I knocked out one, two, and three, and those are more important, right? But if I spent my day doing six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and I didn't do number one, it's probably a worse day, right? So make sure you're doing whatever the most important thing is right now, whenever you're doing what you're doing, especially when you're thinking about the Pomodoro technique, or especially when you're doing, you know, planning your day or planning your week, think about that. Think about the priority order. Never going to get everything done. So make sure you're getting the most important things done. When will you accomplish it by? We just talked about this, but we won't dive in. But with your weeks, what do you need to get done? By what days, right? And then with your days, you know, literally like by what hour are you going to have it done? Set some time bounds on yourself. And then in the Pomodoro technique, you know, what are you going to get done in those next 20, 25 minutes? Set your alarm, do that thing. And finally, how exactly will you accomplish it, right? So if we just say we're going to study for the exam, what does that actually mean? to study for an exam. I think you get, a lot of you guys know SMART goals by now. That's not specific, that's not measurable, right? And you can't measure your results against that. So instead be very specific, like, okay, I'm gonna go through chapters, you know, two through five today. And go through two through five means that I'm first going to read the chapter and anytime I run into a problem, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Where am I gonna do it? Well, I'm actually gonna use this notebook with this pencil. Be specific, what are you actually going to do? And you should be able to check box whether you did that thing or you didn't do that thing. Does that make sense? And I promised you one of the, the biggest uh, gaps that we have naturally is to set you know, vague goals without even knowing that they're vague. And by being specific, like literally like play devil's advocate with yourself, well, how exactly are you gonna do that? Specifically, what is the physical action that you are going to do that I can measure whether you did or did not do? Make sense? Awesome. Any questions? Anything? All right. So now you guys know how to execute, how to plan to execute, how to set up your environment so that you can execute at your highest level. But life happens. Things hit the fan all the time. So how do you actually reset and recenter when that happens, right? It might be you didn't sleep well, so your day's off to a weird start. Or it might be that something actually happens in your social life or with your family, or maybe something epically bad happens with, with, uh, with your classwork. For example, I remember one uh, class where I had a CS project where I thought I nailed it and then I, it came back as like a zero and it was like 10% of the grade. And I was just like, oh my God. 
So we can either let that drag us down or we can reset, recenter, refocus and use our energy as best as possible for what's left, right? We can't control the past, we can control the future. So how do we do that? This is what I cannot more highly recommend. And I know that maybe only half of you will do this, but I promise you, this will literally change your life if you start to do it. It's a breathing technique, right? So anytime you need to reset, this only takes 90 seconds or less, actually less. You find a quiet space, maybe put on your headphones, uh, maybe put on some calm sounds or some bi binaural beats or some, uh, if you have the calm app or, you know, any kind of very calm sounds, if anything, or, or complete silence. You find a strong, do this with me, find a strong, comfortable, dignified posture, right? Like, like you're proud, like you're confident, a good posture. I know a lot of us are slouching, so up. <sighs> put one hand, your right hand on your chest, on your heart, so you can literally feel your heart. There's some physiology behind this. Your right hand on your heart and put your left hand on your belly, your belly, the part that gets bigger and smaller, your belly. And what we're going to do, we're going to do this together. No too cool for school. We're going to close our eyes and we're going to take six deep breaths. And the way that we're going to do this, it's going to be six seconds in and six seconds out. So take your time breathing in, but breathe in as much air as you can. And then when you breathe out, breathe out a giant sigh, like, ah, like you're getting everything out. All right. We're gonna do four of these as an example. So everyone close your eyes, <sighs> dignified posture and breathe in through your nose, hold it, breathe out. <sighs> breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> Just focus on your breath, breathe in. Breathe out. Keep your posture up. Breathe in. Breathe out everything. All right, you can open your eyes. Do you guys feel, feel the difference now? Do you feel like a little more calm, a little more at peace? More importantly, a little more present in this moment? We didn't do this at the beginning, but I know a lot of you guys might have had a lot going on through your head about all the work you have to do, about the classes you just had, the people you were just talking to, what you have to do later, a lot of things going on in your head. And like computers, right, if you have too much going on, it slows down everything else. So what matters is that we clear all that out and focus on the present moment. And in this state, right, in this state, we can make good decisions, right? In this state is how we want to do our planning. In this state, is how we want to approach anything that we're about to do, right? In this state. Because how many of us, like I said, woke up, didn't get into this state and just started our day. I actually did that this morning because I was, I was late for the first meeting. And as you guys know, sometimes that can kind of mess up the rest of the day, right? But you know what I did right before this call, even though my, my, I was trying to find my monitor and I couldn't find it and it wasn't turning on once I finally found it, I paused and I took 60 breaths and then I was totally clear. I was ready to go for this meeting, right? So that was less than 90 seconds. I actually changed the timing on it. It was less than 90 seconds. And it completely changes your state, which isn't only important right now. It's important for the, the next 25 minutes. It's important for the next hour. It's important for the next part of the day. It's important for the entire next day, right? That's why we do this. So anytime that you're in that flustered state, I promise you, just take the, the 60 seconds, take the 90 seconds to take your six deep breaths. Just remember, six deep breaths, six in, six out, six. That's all you got to do. So, good deal? Good deal. And finally, on top of all of this, something that I remind you guys to do is to remember exactly what your why is. Normally I show this video, I won't show it today, but um, I'll, I'll share the slides with you so you can see this video. This is Eric Thomas, and this is his video about what is your why? Why do you do what you do, right? A lot of times when we have a lot of assignments to accomplish, a lot of homework, a lot of exams, we lose sight of why we're doing this in the first place. And why we're doing it is our source of motivation that doesn't change, right? So a lot of us are doing this because we have an amazing opportunity being in college in the first place. A lot of us have big dreams for our careers, but it's not only about us, 
It's about all the people around us, right? Some of us want to impact the world. Some of us want to set an example for our families. You know, what's your why? Why are you doing what you're doing, right? If we focus too granularly, it's just, why am I writing this paper, right? Why am I doing this assignment? Why am I doing this MP, right? But when you go on a higher level, once, oh, well, it's because I want to get a good grade. Well, why? Oh, well, it's because I want to do well in this class. Well, why? Oh, well, because it means that I learned what I needed to learn. Well, why? Oh, it's because I want to perform in my job. Well, why? And you keep going higher and higher and higher. And eventually you get to your real why, which is like, I want to make a difference, right? I want to set the example. I want to have an impact. I want to set up my life in the way that my parents gave so much for me to have, right? Or maybe it's a life that my parents didn't set up for me. So I have to, I have to prove myself. Well, what is yours, right? It's different for every person. A lot of ours are similar, but you know, figure out what is your why? Why are you doing, why are you in college? One of my favorite questions to ask some of my new clients is why are you in college? And they're usually taken back and then they're, they, they, some of them don't know because naturally, you know, it's just kind of part of, you know, you go to high school, go to college, and then you start working. And some of them don't have a good answer. I'll tell you that right now. So if, if you don't know exactly right now, like, why are you in college? Why are you studying what you're studying? Why are you here right now? Right? Be intentional with everything that you're doing. And that source of motivation is what will get you through, like I said, all-nighters if you have to pull an all-nighter. Hopefully you won't have to, because with all these techniques, you'll be able to get your stuff done, you know, earlier in the day, earlier in the week. But in, in those hard times, and there will be hard times, like plenty of ups and downs through your college careers, then this is why. This is what's, this is what's gonna push you through, is your why. Make sense? So, how to channel the best version of you. Like we mentioned at the beginning, there's a version of you that didn't come to this meeting or ignores all this information and doesn't do any of this and has a terrible semester and blah, blah, blah. And there's a version of you that absolutely crushes it, that internalizes all of this and starts implementing all of this. And, and you, you get A's in all your exams and you're, you're focusing during class and there's this best version of you somewhere, right? And so we wanna channel that version of us. So how do we do that? So first, introduce yourself to the little voice inside your head. And the little voice, uh, uh, we're recording, I won't, I won't swear. But it's, it's this, this little voice in there that is always the devil's advocate and always wants you to have that instant gratification. And this little voice always wants you to do what's comfortable. It wants to keep you in your comfort zone. It wants you to relax. It wants you to do things that feel good in the moment, right? As opposed to what you know is better for you in the long run. So first, introduce yourself. Like, meet this little voice. Notice the fact that it's there. Like, literally notice it as a different being outside of you. There's this little voice that comes up sometimes. It's not you. It's just a little voice. Become familiar. What does it want? What does it like? What are these things that are instant gratification that it tries to get you to do? What are these little hits of dopamine that it runs on, right? Maybe it's, you know, scrolling through YouTube and finding just these two, three minute videos, but you find 20 of them and you waste hours, right? Or maybe it's, uh, you know, it, it loves to eat candy, which makes you feel like garbage later. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, what, what is it? What is your little voice like to do? Maybe it's junk food. Maybe it's just laying on the couch for four hours. Maybe it's been watching Netflix. Who, who knows? What does the little voice always tell you that it wants to do? What does it run on? What is it like? And remember that it's the opposite of the best version of you. It gets you the opposite results of what you actually want. Uh, one example that I just posted about the other day was like I was here and I knew that I should go for a run because I had an exercise yet that day. And my little voice, I literally listened to it. It was saying, oh, well, it's really cold out today. I'm like, oh, like, dude, you're comfortable right now. Like, you know, you can, you can do it tomorrow morning, right? Like you, you, you just worked really hard and like, you know, you got, you got good food. You can just kind of like chill and, and watch something. But I noticed that it was my little voice in my head telling me that. And so I said, okay, I have to do literally the opposite to shut it up. By doing the opposite, you shut it up. If you listen to it, it gets stronger. That's the thing. But if you do the complete opposite of what it's telling you to stay inside, to be comfortable, to relax, to not do your work, to put it off till later, to do it tomorrow. If you do the opposite, it starts getting smaller and smaller. I, I don't know if you guys heard, but I take cold showers now. And the only reason, well, there's lots of health benefits. I don't care about the health benefits. I care about the fact that it's something that my little voice will never want to do. 
My little voice will always tell me to take a warm shower that literally no one's going to notice, right? Like you, you don't have to take a cold shower. It's going to be freezing when you get out. It's going to this and that and blah, blah, blah. And that's why I do it. Because by doing that, I make that little voice smaller and smaller and less and less powerful. And so it has less and less control over me. And so when those other situations come up, like it trying to keep me from exercising, right? Or it trying to keep me from finishing my work in my 25 minute block, it keeping trying to get me to go do the fun stuff, like scroll through Instagram or do the fun stuff, like watch some YouTube. It has way less power now because I got into the habit of doing the opposite of what it says. But it all starts with recognizing the fact that it's there. Does that make sense? And so we just talked about that at the end. Do decide today, right now, that you are going to listen for it. And when it comes up, you are going to do the opposite thing of what it says on purpose. Even if you don't want to, if you know it's that little voice telling you to do something, do the opposite just to shut it up, just to keep it from getting stronger. Because later, when it's something more important, right, you don't want it to be strong. You want it to be weak. And then two, the opposite of that is to meet the best version of you, right? So instead of just the little voice in your head, there's also this version of you that you can see, that you can visualize that's absolutely crushing and that's achieving everything you want to achieve. And if you put yourself in their shoes, it's a good indicator of what you should do too, right? So first, like, what do they look like, right? What clothes are they wearing? Are they, are they in their pajamas all day or because they make an excuse and think that they can get by doing that? Or do they, do they actually just get dressed because they know it makes them feel different, Right. Uh, what is their posture like? You know, are they are they humped over and then they have you know low confidence, low energy, or are they standing strong? The best version of you. What do they look like? What what's their energy like? You know, are, are they low on energy or are they out there? Are they sitting here trying to be passionate about something? The best version, right? What do they do first thing in the morning? The best version of you. If you had your absolute best morning ever and you crush your day, what did your morning look like? What did the best version of you actually do, right? And after it did that, your morning routine, then what did it do? And then what? And then what? And then what? Be specific, right? Literally, I, I recommend after this, you take, you know, maybe 20 minutes and just imagine the best version of you having the best day where you crush it. What, what does that version of you do? Step by step by step. What do they eat for breakfast? What do they eat for lunch, for dinner, for snacks? You know, do they drink a ton of water? Do they drink a ton of tea? Do they like coffee, but only in the morning? Like what, what do they actually consume? What is the fuel that the best version of you runs on, right? This is going to be different for every person. Some things, we have different tastes. Not everyone eats kale three meals a day. Like that's fine. But what does the best version of you actually eat, right? Think about that. What would you prefer that is healthy, but you can get by on? What does that version of you eat? Uh, who do they surround themselves with? Who are they friends with? Who do they spend time with? How often do they talk to them? How often do they talk to them? And what forms do they talk, right? Where do they go during the day? The best version of you. Where does the best version of you go during the day? Where does the best version of you do their work? Where does the best version of you hang out? What do they do at night, right? The best version. What, what is their mindset like? What is the best version of you focus on every single day? What is the best version of you keep away from in general, either in your mind or also physically? What, what do you stay away from? What's their top priority of the best version of you? What's their top priority? Don't even ask yourself. Think about the best version of you and say, okay, what is their top priority? What would they do today? What would they do this week? What would they do in the next hour? What would the best version of me do, right? And finally, what do you need to do to actually step into that version of you, right? What's missing right now? What do you need to do differently so that you can start being that person, right? There's a difference there. So I love the analogy of getting up and running or taking a cold shower, but that's what the best version of me does. And it's also the opposite of what the little voice tells me to do, right? So I do those things. So maybe you need to buy a new journal so that you actually journal in the mornings. Maybe you should get a different planner. Maybe you just need to meditate in the morning. Just take 10 minutes and just think, sit with your thoughts, right? Maybe you need to attend more talks like this. Maybe you need to look up a YouTube video on more study habits, right? Who knows? What is the best version of you? How do you step into that? What do you need to do? What have you not been doing that the best version of you is doing? And how can you start doing that? Does that make sense? Good deal. Before I go into the last three points, any other questions or comments? All right, guys. So if nothing else, if nothing else, we taught y'all how to execute 
where and when to execute, all the things about planning, all the things about planning your days and your weeks and the techniques and the best version of you and the little voice in your head. And if nothing else, I want you guys to remember these three things. I want you to remember all of it. It's all very important. And these are all things that you can start doing literally in the next five minutes. You can start doing these things, right? But if nothing else, remember these three things. So one is that there's three things that you're constantly spending and that you'll always spend. You spend your time, you spend your money, and you spend your energy or TME, right? You spend these three things in different forms. And it's how you spend these three that will determine the results that you get in your life in every way, shape, and form. So, you know, I'm fortunate now that I have money that I can spend in different forms. So guess where it's going? A lot, almost all of it goes into different kinds of fitness clothes or things that will make me want to be more active. Like I just bought a new standing desk and some new gear for my office set up so that I can be more productive, right? I, I actually got a different apartment now that, not because I want a big baller apartment, but because I know that it'll help me do my best work and feel better during the days, right? That's where I spend my money. Obviously being college students, we can assume that there's less, that's fine, but you still spend two other things. It's your time and your energy, right? Where are you spending your time? What are you spending it on? If you reflect on the day and you're like, I used to be sometimes, don't get me wrong. And you spent three hours on YouTube that day, right? What could you have been doing instead? It's not just three hours lost. It's, it's a lot, four, five, six hours lost because if you would have spent it differently, it might've stacked up on top of each other and you, your whole day could have been different, right? Who knows? So how are you spending your time? And also how are you spending your energy, right? Are there people in your life that completely drain you when you talk to them and they're stealing your energy from you? Is uh, in, uh, in the future, I talk to a lot of my clients about, you know, the work that they're doing. Do they come home completely drained from their job after eight hours of work and they can't even enjoy the rest of their evening, right? Or does what they're doing give them energy, right? So as you're doing your classwork and everything, don't get me wrong, some classes are just gonna be tough, but if you keep your why in mind, it should also give you energy because you're making progress towards that and that should excite you, right? You're getting closer and closer to what you're actually dreaming of doing and being and achieving. So that's how you can kind of turn that into something that gives you energy, right? So keep this concept in mind. You spend your time, money, and energy, those three things. <laughs> this one, the second one, uh, does anyone know who this is by chance? This is uh, C.T. Fletcher. So he was this, uh, I don't even think he was a bodybuilder. He was just kind of a heavy lifting guy, but he's very well known for being super motivational and his way of motivation is just constant swearing and constant like, you know, really hard on people. But he's kind of nuts, right? And I love this picture and I want you to keep this in mind because one of the things that he said that stuck with me is that something that you can always control, always, no matter what, is the amount of effort that you put into something, right? There's always gonna be other factors like your environment or sometimes even your mental state or who knows what, but you can always, always, always control the amount of effort that you put forth in any attempt and anything that you do. He actually said that his favorite attempt at lifting, you know, they, they lift different weights in different forms. I think it was like seven, 500 pound bench or something like that. And they wear like these like tight vests that help them do their, their lifting. And he said it was his favorite attempt because he knew he'd have to give it absolutely everything he had. And during the attempt, his shirt broke, which essentially messes up the whole lift. And so he failed, he didn't get it, but it's his favorite attempt because he knows that he gave it absolutely 1000% everything that he had, right? So even though he failed, he was still super pumped and excited and at peace with that attempt because he knew he gave it everything he had. And this comes into play, especially in the college days, because sometimes we're going to study our butts off. Sometimes we're going to pull an all-nighter and we're not going to get the result, right? But what matters is, did we set ourselves up for success? And we did, did we give it everything that we had? That's what matters. Uh, a couple quick stories. I told you one of those where, you know, I, I spent a bunch of time on a project and I got, I think it was a 10% to be specific. Um, and then there was another time where on our campus, we have this, this awesome... Uh, party holiday called unofficial it's an all day long uh fun day of partying and i spent one of those in a computer lab sitting in the same chair for 11 hours trying to finish a project and finding a bug and i couldn't find it 
I, I wasted the entire day. People were calling me from, from one o'clock, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I said, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to find this bug. And then I'm going to go enjoy the day with everyone else. And I sat in that chair for 11 hours up until midnight, the deadline. People were calling me the whole day. Dude, where are you? Come out, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I got to try. I got to finish. I got to finish. And I didn't get it either. At 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock hit and me and my buddy looked at each other because we were both there together. And we we're like, man. Like we missed it, but at the same time, I don't regret it because I know that that was my priority at the time and I was giving it everything that I had, right? So even it doesn't, it's not a waste of time when you do that, even though I didn't get it, I gave it everything I had and I'll never forget that either. So I know that I have that in me now. If, if there ever comes a time where I really have to push, I have that, right? So you don't regret that. What matters is that you give it everything you got. And if the result comes, great. And if not, the way you find peace is that you set yourself up and you gave it everything you got. Remember this face, love this face. And finally, one last analogy for you is that of a train. And I want you guys to all remember that you are all trains. And the reason I tell you this is because when a train is going fast, right? When a train has momentum, it can blast through literally like a, like a concrete wall. It, it smashes through semi trucks and they explode. Like absolutely everything gets annihilated when it's in the way of an, of an oncoming train, right? But when the train is not in motion, all you need to hold it back, the same train is like a little block like this and it won't move, right? Because it has no momentum. So the momentum itself is what matters. It's not that the train is weaker. It's just, it doesn't have some momentum. So a lot of times we'll find ourselves in these states too, where it seems like everything is hard. It seems like everything is a bigger problem than it is. It seems like even the tiniest thing throws us off track and we lose our focus, right? And the only reason that happens is because we don't have our momentum, right? It's not us, it's not you, you are a train. If you get enough momentum behind you, you can blast through literally anything, right? So if you don't feel that way, Remember that it's not you, you are a freaking train. It's just your momentum, right? And to gain momentum, as you guys know, it's just like a little step at a time. It's a little push at a time. You go little by little by little, and then you pick up and then you pick up and then you pick up. But you're not gonna go from zero to 60 in like two seconds if you're a train, right? It takes time, it takes steps. Especially if you're not in motion, it's a lot harder to start again than if you know, you're, you're kind of going and you wanna go a little faster. So keep this in mind, especially when you're resetting, when those times come and uh, when you get into these states where it seems like everything's piling on top of each other. And remember, it's not you. You're a train. It's just your momentum. And we know how to gain momentum now, right? We know steps. We know how to reset. We know how to plan. We know how to execute. Let's go one, one block at a time, one brick at a time. And then you'll get your momentum back and then you'll be smashing through five foot concrete walls again. Make sense? All right. So that is all the content I have for you guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope you picked up some great techniques. This is the part where I open it up to Q&A. I want to answer any and all of your questions and field all of your comments and everything. It doesn't have to be about college. It can be about professional life. It could be about social life. It could be about basketball. It could be about literally anything. Uh, really quickly, here's my stuff. So connect with me. I would love to connect with every single one of you guys. Like, I don't care how Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever you guys use. I don't care. I'm on all the things. Go to nofluffmindset.com and find me. Um, tell me how this went. Just leave a quick two minute. You know, this was great. I wish you, I wish you would have talked about this. I love that you talked about that. Um, and then finally, for you guys being here, all of you can have a free one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me. Um, no, no strings attached, no questions asked. Since you guys are here, you gave me at least an hour of your time. I'm happy to give you another hour of my time uh, on your watch. So you can, we can really dig into what's going on with you and how you can optimize yourself because this is all great information and it applies to 90% of people, but sometimes we need to dig into our own situations, right? So uh, if you'd like, uh, you go ahead and book same nofluffmindset.com, just enter that code or just mention the fact that you were here and I'll remember and then uh, we'll, we'll give you a free session. So that is all the content I have at this time. I am happy to open it up for Q&A and take a drink of water. Thank you so much, Caesar. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, I hope all of you guys got something out of the session. I mean, I got a bunch of notes here. <laughs> um, 
Well, yeah, one uh, quick question. So, um, like, uh, I don't, like, when I study uh, specifically, uh, you know, I start studying, and then all of a sudden my mind kind of shifts a little bit and start thinking, oh, did the Seahawks win today or something like that? Do you know, uh, like, how uh, how could you, like, set your mindset down to um, just focus and finish everything uh, that you have planned, I guess? Yeah, man. So two things with that. So one, like I said, with the Pomodoro, like I mentioned, and it doesn't have to be Pomodoro. It's just all about chunking. You know, you focus on the one thing that you need to do. And that one yeah. thing is a lot easier to focus on than trying to focus on a lot of things. Right. If you're trying to focus on a lot of things. Your brain is already moving around. And then the Seahawks is like literally right here. Your brain's already moving. Yeah. Right? It's kind of the one thing that helps. And then the other part of that is as you're going through your chunk, your 20, 25 minutes, have a notepad next to you like pen and paper, separate from the computer, not on your computer, separate pen and paper. Yeah. So that when a thought comes like the Seahawks and you're like, you want to check it just write Seahawks, boom, keep focusing, right? Yeah. The reason you do that is because you literally get it out of your brain. And so your brain, instead of cycling it around and clogging up, literally like fogging up your mind, you like get it out onto paper and then you can stop worrying about it. Literally. Right. This is why I also recommend, uh, we didn't dive too much into journaling today, but um, I have videos on it. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you guys. But essentially, that's why we do it in the morning is first thing in the morning, we just see what's going on in our brain before we look at our phone before we have to do something. What is going on in our brains right now? And how can we clear it out? And journaling is just literally writing all of it out, all those things digging into our thoughts and, and getting it out of our brain, so that you clear up space so that you can run more efficiently, right? And it's very different because a lot of people confuse journaling with like, you know, like a diary or like logging, like what you did all day, um, which tracking is important for your goals, but that's something different. Uh, it's not that at all. It's actually the reason you do it first thing in the morning is that a, you're a lot closer to your subconscious. Your brain is in what's called gamma state. And so you're a lot closer to just your subconscious thoughts, but also before you start reacting to the day, you just see if, if nothing's going on, right? Like when you first turn on your computer and you haven't opened anything yet, when you first wake up, like what's going on in your brain? Like what are all, what, what are, what's taking up space? What are all the programs that are running? It should be pretty clear first thing in the morning, right? And so a lot of times, a lot of my clients, the first two or three times they journal, they'll literally go for like 45 minutes or an hour because they didn't realize they had so much going on up there that they never cleared out. They were just constantly distracted by either schoolwork or their, their job or the things they had to do, or you know, they were just distracted and they never actually paused to just be with their thoughts. And so that's a long way to say writing physically, pen and paper, it goes a long way. There's a lot of physiology behind it, but it literally helps your brain. It says, hey, I got that thought out. And so I don't have to think about it anymore because I know it's here on this piece of paper. Right. So as okay. you're going through your blocks, have that pen and paper next to you. Yeah, thank you. I never, never thought about that, but it kind of works just like an agenda type of thing. I guess, you know, just keep the, the thought out of your brain. So, yeah. 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 Get them all out. And I promise you guys pen and paper, or at least a tablet where you write with like a stylus, but the act of writing, there's something in our physiology, I, I still need to study this more myself, but it's in our physiology that when we write physically with a, with like a writing utensil, and on some type of tablet or paper, there's a different response between your brain and what you're doing than if you try to type it, for example, because typing is kind of just pushing the same buttons and then the screen actually goes away. But when you write physically on paper, that's the best thing you can do because then your brain literally says, ah, we got that out. It's right here. It's in the physical world. I don't have to keep it up here anymore because I know it's over there. All right. Okay. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man, no problem. What else? What else do you guys have? Hey, see, sir. Um, uh, I actually got to head out. I have a quiz to do, but I just wanted to thank you for you know hosting the meeting and uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, but I'll be here next week on Friday as well to hear about the internships, uh, how to how to score an internship. Um, but yeah, also, Elias, I want to thank you for uh, inviting uh, my ship chapter. And uh, hopefully I can get some more of uh, my members to attend uh, next week. Um, All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, of course. It's good to meet See you. you. Yeah, it's good to meet you. Yeah. All right, yeah. Enrique. Cool. See you. Yeah, one quick tangent, guys. Like, ship you dub. Like, y'all are literally right here. I know... Uh, do you guys have cars? How many of you have cars? Oh, really? Wow. Holy crap. Jeez. I, I didn't when I was in college. Well, nonetheless, yeah, they're literally right there. 
Um, Y'all should be doing a lot more things together because I mean, especially right now when things are virtual, it's easy, right? You just send an invite somewhere else and then they invite their people in and we're all together. And so you could definitely utilize their resources. They, uh, I've been working with them for a few years now, I think since 2018. And so they completely shifted their chapter from being a pretty small chapter that kind of ran on info sessions to one that has kind of a committee based structure. So people can actually become involved and have leadership experiences. And that's how you get more and more people in, but also how you have a bigger impact lining up with the pillars that you have, right? With your community and with professional development and with academic resources and development and supporting each other. That's how you do that. So hopefully we can start doing more of that when, when things calm down, but also, you know, now, now that we're connected, we can start doing more of that together. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, definitely need to build this chapter up. We're kind of small still. So <laughs> yeah, we need to get some more membership as well. So that's, uh, that's another thing. So we'll definitely yeah. keep in touch and yeah. And yeah, I mean, we're neighbors. I'm, I'm on 19th and Madison. I'm right here. Like I pass, oh, by, yeah, really? <laughs> I pass by all the time. Like I, I like right yeah. house too. Like I, I've been here three, three years now in Cap Hill. So yeah. Really? We're, wow. Okay. 21st in Cherry. Oh, there you go. Right there. <laughs> Right there, right there. And before 19th and Madison, I was literally on 17th and Madison on, on the Trader Joe's. I lived on top of the Trader Joe's. Really? Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man, we're neighbors. We should be doing a lot more. But um, as, even with you, like I said, we should all connect and, and, and oh, grow. Yeah. Um, you can get a lot of tips from them now, but I'm also happy to give you guys a lot of advice that I have. I, I was lucky to be part of a large chapter. Like as soon as I joined, they were already big. We had upperclassmen teaching us where to sit in the classroom, what study habits to have. The fact that we should go to career fairs, giving us mock interviews and resume reviews. Like I was very fortunate that that was our setup going in. Mm -hmm. And so I try to make the condition to make sure as many ship chapters as possible have kind of a similar setup so that all of your incoming freshmen and sophomores have that to help them. And then the juniors, sure. Like I said, you guys should have two, three, maybe four internships under your belt. By the time you're graduating, you should have five, six, seven, ten full-time offers to choose from. And you should be denying interview offers because you don't have time for all of them. <laughs> that's what I literally, exactly. and that's not being cocky. It's just like, if you do the right things, that's what you get. And so yeah. I want to make sure that's you guys great. are doing the same. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we'll definitely, uh, yeah, we'll keep it building and keep it going forward and um, we'll, we'll definitely uh, keep in touch with uh, Ship U Dub as well and, and do the best we can, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. So yeah, anything else, guys, about um, about either study habits or time management or professional stuff? I mean, you can ask quick questions now. You can ask any questions now, actually. But we're gonna have that ne that talk next week too. Anything about this whole coaching thing that I do? Any any other tips on anything else that's going on in your life? Don't be shy. <laughs> Sorry, was that a question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, what is there anything else? You know, what else do you guys have uh, going on in your brains right now as far as all of this kind of stuff goes? What's something that sticks out that's still a question that you kind of have or something that you might, you might, you could use a tip on, you know, what else is going on in your heads? For me, at least I'm, uh, I'm very uh, stressed. <laughs> Mainly because I uh, I started I started studying like very very late into the quarter, so I'm I'm trying to catch up. Um, that's one thing, you know. Always always stay ahead of time. That's uh, <laughs> trying to bring it back, um, my study habits back on track and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, man. That comes from uh, like we said. Yeah, that would be the planning and everything that we just talked about, mm -hmm. but on a exactly. bigger like the weekly level, but also the semester level, right? You can chunk it into weeks of three, four, five, whatever it is and maybe monthly planning and make sure, hey, like these are the big things that I have coming up this month, right? I need to make sure that I'm on track and to hit those goals, I need to have these sub goals, right? I need to be halfway done with this by this day and then I should be pretty much done by this day and this day should just be wrapping it up, right? Like, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta make sure that you have that urgency that you're feeling now with everything stacked up, but feel that same urgency with your own deadlines you know, throughout the week so that you're setting yourself up so that nothing piles up, right? If you have that yeah. urgency kind of spread out, it, it really doesn't feel the same. It feels different. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And uh, something I reminded a client, uh, literally working with yesterday, he's a, a junior um, at a different university. Mm -hmm. I said, um, oh shoot, where was I going with this? Ah, yes. To give yourself grace, 
like things happen. I, man, so it's so hard not to swear right now. Things happen. Like it, it happens, right? Like there's going to be times where you do procrastinate. There's going to be times when things pile up. There's going to be times when you forgot about something and like it happens. Right. So all that matters is that you waste zero. And I mean, literally zero energy worrying about the past or worrying about anything that you can't control literally zero and instead take that same energy and put it into what you can control right so for example right now you mentioned things are kind of piled up or maybe you're late to studying maybe you have exams coming up maybe it's a lot of homework assignments so wasting energy worrying about the fact that you didn't you know set yourself up right and that you are stressed now and that you have a lot to do all of that energy is a waste it's an absolute waste. It serves you in no way. There's nothing that comes from worrying about that, right? But what you can do is control right now, right? So this is my current state. This is what I need to do. I have these planning strategies now so I can start to use them, plan out my next week. What do I need to do? By what days? And then as you go into your days, plan out your day, you know, block by block and you knock it out. Right? Yeah, exactly. And all of your energy on that. Just what's coming up? What's next? Mm -hmm. How can I plan my day to perfection so that I execute to perfection so I get the most out of the next day, the next week? That's what matters. Exactly. Yeah. Like I said, waste zero, and I promise you, zero, zero, zero mm -hmm. on anything ever in life that you can't control, and take that same energy and use it in a way that serves you. And I promise you that that little change will make like the biggest difference because it applies yeah. to literally everything. It applies to you know, when there's life events that happen to you, it applies to when things stack up for work or for school, it applies to basketball games that I've been a part of, right? If, if you, if you throw a fit on the other end of the court, then it's going to be a four and five and they're going to score on you, right? Just whatever, get back into it. No big deal. Focus your energy. What's more important, throwing a fit or getting back on defense, right? That's right. What's more important, mm -hmm. worrying about being stressed and thinking or just plan your day, right? Plan the rest of your night. Plan, plan the rest of your week. Just do that. It's the most, exactly. it's literally by definition, the best use of your energy, right? It just so happens to also feel much better, but it is by definition, the best way to use your energy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can't even change the past. So what's the point of worrying about it? So yeah. you can't control it. Zero, right. literally zero. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate yes, sir. It. Yes, sir. I got to step out. I just want to say I really enjoyed the the talk. It was a lot of useful stuff, a lot of reminders of things I used to do that I need to start doing again, too. Um, but yeah, uh, looking forward to Friday. So I hope I see you guys there. All right. See All right, Bruno. Take care. Thanks for being here. And so one more time, let's open it up. Is there, is there any, any final questions, comments, concerns, anything from you guys? I want to make sure everything is answered and you feel excited and confident and prepared to take on the next day, the next week, everything. You feel like you got everything you got or do you have any questions on anything else? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great, awesome. Um, where can we find this recording? Because I think it'd be nice to go back and listen to it probably again. Yes, uh, I'm going to post it on YouTube actually and I'll send out a link. Um, and uh, Cesar Martinez will also have it, so uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll I'll post a link to the YouTube channel and everything, so you can always listen to it and and do whatever you want with it. <laughs> yes, and Great, I will also you. I will also share these slides with you. Uh, where where can we share the slides? Um, if you could send it to me, and I could spread it out to everyone, I guess that'll be that'll be good. Yep. So yeah. I'll do that too. So you'll have the the frameworks there. But like I said, connect with me any way, shape, or form. Nofluffmindset.com is how you just find all of my stuff. That that's what it leads you to. And so just connect with me and you can bug me. I promise you anytime. I'm happy to answer all your questions. Like you guys should be running at top efficiency all the time. And if not, you should be able to restructure whenever you need to. That's how you guys should be running. And if you're not at any point, that's what we're here for. Great. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. You, okay. All right, guys. That's all I have. All right. Nothing else for me. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so all much. Right, so yeah, good. Thank See you. you next Friday. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone.